All right, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get started with the new GPT 3.5 turbo fine tuning feature in Node.js. So the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you go over to VS Code and you're gonna open up a new workspace. So once you've done that, all you need to do is npm init dash y. Once you're in there, you're gonna just simply add the line of type module because we're gonna be using imports in this example. So once you're here, you're, you can also npm install the two dependencies that we have here. So dot env and open ai then once those are all installed you can go ahead and touch a couple files so an index.js and a dot env and while you're at it you can also create a file like i have here style and tone this can be named whatever you want dot uh, json l so that json l file is going to be what you use to actually fine tune and train the model and this is what it looks like so i just used an example from their documentation scaled out to 10 different examples so within the docs i think there were three and i just scaled that out to be 10 because that's the minimum requirement of items that you need to create a fine tuning session so once you have all that set up uh, just make sure that the file is all good to go and has the right format and everything. There are some good tools out there where you can just check to make sure you have no typos and all of that and that it's a valid JSONL file. And then from there, we're just going to go into our index.js. So once we are in our uh, index.js, we're going to import a handful of things. So OpenAI, FS, and .env. And while we're on .env, I'm going to have you go over to the OpenAI API keys um, and just create a new key. Once you have that, you can go within your .env, OpenAI underscore API underscore key, and paste in your key there. So once that's all in, make sure you save that. Uh, you're good to close out all these other files because we're not going to be using them uh, from here on out. So from here, we're just going to, first we're going to upload the file here. So if I just go ahead and run this. No, so once it's ran, it should be uploaded. And then this is a simple command on how you can list out the files that are within their system. So if I just comment this line out and I go index.js. So now I should have that most recent version of style and tone. So if you have the same file name and you upload it multiple times, don't worry. It will create multiple instances of it. You'll see that I have other versions of uh, that same file. It just specifies a different uh, timestamp with them. So once you've done that, you can dive right into fine tuning. But the one thing that you will have to grab from here once you've listed out the files is the ID. So you can grab the ID and then you can simply go within uh, the fine tuning methods and just a little asterisk here. So I am using the OpenAI SDK and version four just came out last week and fine tuning just came out today at time of recording. So the example that I'm showing here doesn't actually work for fine tuning a GPT 3.5, but I have an alternative that you can use in the interim. So if I just go ahead and save this here, I'll show you the error that I ran into. So it's saying invalid base model, GPT 3.5, it must be Ada, Babbage, Curry, or DaVinci. So the SDK might just be still updating. And at uh, you know when you watch this, it could very well be the case that this might work. So I'll make a repo for this uh, and pin it within the description. And I'll just uh, update this if there are any tweaks to the SDK once it's updated. But in the interim, what you can do is you can simply make a fetch, fetch request to the endpoint. So you're going to specify that uh, training file ID like I showed you in the terminal. You're going to specify GPT 3.5 Turbo like I had shown you in the previous example. You're going to set up your headers with your environment variable. You're going to define the endpoint. And then you're simply going to wait for a response here. So within this, uh, since I already actually fine tuned this example, I'll just go in and get the most recent version and I'll just go ahead and fine tune it again. So if I just run this now, 
So you'll see that it comes back with this response and it's created that fine tuning job. And then from there, all you have to do is wait for an email. So it can take anywhere from a, a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the size of the data set. Now with the example I showed you, uh, where it's just 10 lines, it only takes a handful of minutes, at least at time of recording, but this is later at night where I am. Um, so I, you know, I'm sure time of day and all of that sort of factors into the queue and how many people are trying to train models uh, on their system. And then all you have to do is once you get that email, you'll have a string of the model um, that you're going to put in and reference when you make requests from your application. So typically uh, you might just go within the model and say you're using, you know, GPT 3.5 turbo. It's going to give you your organization and then a unique key associated with that fine tuned model to be able to use it. And then once you've done that, you can just simply go ahead and run it there. Now, the other thing to note that is really nice is once you fine tune models, you can actually go within the playground and find them within the fine tunes uh, section when you go and specify a model. So that's really nice if you want to play around with seeing what's what worked, what didn't work uh, when you're fine tuning and uh, really, you know, playing around with this. So other things to note is it is based on the number of tokens is uh, how the pricing works. So there is a specific rate uh, based on tokens. So if you just paste in your JSON L, uh, it will give you a general sense on how much or how many tokens that it could potentially be using. So just a sort of a nice little tool to know that's out there, a little tokenizer on their website. Uh, like I showed you, there's the JSON L validators out there. So there's a handful of these. I'm sure there's one that you can use within VS Code to just make sure that it is valid. You, you don't have any typos, anything like that. And then a couple other resources, I'll pin all of these in the description of the video, but uh, I'd encourage you to keep an eye on the OpenAI-Node repo on GitHub. So this is their SDK where they're updating uh, uh, all the new features for uh, their Node.js and TypeScript implementation. And then also I'll point you to their blog post and their documentations for fine tuning, which are all excellent. So kudos to the team at OpenAI. Great job on implementing this. Very clear documentation right out of the gate. And I had no issues in fine tuning the model. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.